dose of Dr. Debbie, I'm Dr. Debbie Silver. So in the last episode, I was talking about the three discoveries that were made in my PhD study. Uh, one was that healing from betrayal is very different than healing from other life crises, death of a loved one, disease, natural disaster. So it needed its own name, which is now called post-betrayal transformation. Why is it different? It's different because betrayal feels so intentional. We take it so personally, so the entire self has to be rebuilt. Rejection, abandonment, belonging, confidence, worthiness, trust. They all need to be rebuilt. When they are, you are in a complete and total state that is different from where you were before. And that state is called post-betrayal transformation. The second discovery was that there's this collection of symptoms, physical, mental, and emotional, so common to betrayal, it's known as post-betrayal syndrome. And we have that quiz on the site to see to what extent uh, people are struggling. Uh, we've had over 18,000 people take it at this point, and it's staggering to see the symptoms left in the wake of this type of experience, but you can heal from all of it. If you're interested in that quiz, you can find it at the PBT, as in post-betrayal transformation, the pbtinstitute.com forward slash quiz. The third discovery, and that's what I want to talk about today, is that while we can stay stuck, and so many of us do, for years, decades, a lifetime, if we're going to fully heal, we're going to, going from that place of post-betrayal syndrome to that place of post-betrayal transformation, we're going to go through five now proven predictable stages. What's really exciting about that is we know what happens physically, mentally, emotionally at every one of those stages, and we know what it takes to move from one stage to the next. What makes that so great? Because now healing is predictable. There's a roadmap. What I'd like to do today is go through those five stages. And what I invite you to do is see where you land. Now, before I go into that though, I wanna just talk about how betrayal has so many faces. So uh, here are, are a few. So a very common one is infidelity, right? And it, when I talk about betrayal, it's really the breaking of a spoken or unspoken rule. Every relationship has them. So in a marriage, it's we're gonna be faithful to one another. And when that's not the case, that's a betrayal. It could be your coworker taking credit for your idea, right? The rule was you were going to present something, let's say to the boss together, they go ahead on their own and do it. Well, that's a betrayal. It could be, uh, you know, you, you and your best friend have a, 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 a an unspoken rule, your secret's safe with me. And then all of a sudden, they tell your, your secret, right? They break that, that sacred trust. Uh, the way it works is, the more we trust and the more we depend on that person, the deeper the betrayal. So for example, a child who's completely dependent on that parent and the parent does something awful, that's gonna have a deeper and bigger impact than let's say your coworker taking credit for your idea. Not to say that that doesn't hurt, but different magnitude and level of cleanup that's needed after something like that. So I wanna go through the five stages, pay attention to see which stage you're in now. This is what's so interesting because you may be saying, well, my betrayal happened, I don't, you know, years ago. Watch how, even though it happened years ago, most likely you're stuck in the most common stage, which is stage three. And here's the thing too. These don't necessarily have to be the gigantic betrayals. It could be what we call death by a thousand cuts you know, betrayal. It could be the, oh, it's no big deal betrayal. Oh, yes, it is. It's a big deal to you. You know, so just pay attention to where you land. All right. So the first stage is like a setup stage. And if you can imagine four legs of a table, the four legs being physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. What I saw with every single study participant, me too, was a real heavy lean on two legs and neglecting the other. So which legs were those? physical and mental, and kind of neglecting the emotional and the spiritual. So what does that look like? Looks like we're really good at thinking and doing and not really paying as much attention to the feeling and being. Why is that important? Because it's in the feeling and being where that's where our intuition lies. And we turn that down. We turn that down because we're so busy. And the only way we can get things done is, is if we become almost machine-like getting things done throughout the day. Now, that's not saying that if you're busy, it's a setup for betrayal. It's just what I consistently saw. Stage two, by far, hands down, the scariest of all of the stages. This is D-Day, Discovery Day. And this is the shock uh, to the body and mind. This is where that person 
it's like they take a mask off saying, this is who I've been this whole time. It is a complete and total shock and it's the breakdown of the body, the mind and the worldview. The, with, with the minute you're shocked like that, you've ignited the stress response. So now you're headed for just about every single stress related symptom, illness, condition, disease. Your mind is in a complete state of chaos and overwhelm. You cannot wrap your mind around what you just learned. This makes no sense. And your worldview is shattered. Your worldview is your mental model. These are the rules. This is how it works. Don't go there. You could trust this person. And in one moment or series of moments, your entire worldview has just shattered. The bottom has bottomed out on you. And a new bottom hasn't been constructed yet. So it's terrifying. So, but think about it. If you were walking down the street and the bottom were to bottom out on you, what would you do? You would grab hold of anything and everything you could to stay safe and stay alive. And that's stage three. Survival instincts emerge. It's the most practical of all of the stages. How will I survive this experience? If you can't help me, get out of my way. Where do I live? What do I, what do, I do? How do I feed my kids? Who can I trust? It's that practical. Here's the trap, ready? Because stage three feels so much better than the shock and trauma of where you just came from, you're like, whew, okay. And you start planting roots here. You're not meant to be here long, but you have no idea. There's a stage four and stage five waiting. So in your mind, you're thinking, I better find a way to make this work now. Now, a few things start happening. The longer you stay, the harder it is to leave because the first thing that happens is you start getting these small self benefits from being here. You get to be right. You get a target for your anger. You get someone to blame. You get sympathy from everybody you tell your story to. You get a very powerful story. You get to be right. You don't have to do the hard work of learning to trust again. Should I trust you? Should I trust you? Ah, forget it. I won't trust anybody. You see? So you start planting roots. The longer you're there, now the mind starts doing things like, well, maybe you're not all that. Maybe you deserved it. Maybe, see? And the mind starts playing some tricky games with you, planting deeper roots. Now, because like energy attracts like energy, now you're calling situations and circumstances and people towards you to confirm that this is where you belong. It gets worse. I'll get you out of it. Don't worry. Because you don't like it, you don't feel good here at all. You don't like the people coming towards you. You don't like what your mind's doing. You don't, you don't even like the story you're telling. It feels bad, but you have no idea there's a way out. And you don't know stage four and stage five. Transformation hasn't even happened yet. That's what happens in stages four and stage five. Because you don't even know that, here's where you start using things like food, drugs, alcohol, work, TV, keeping busy, reckless behavior. And now think about it. You do that for a day a week, a month, now it's a habit, a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years. And I can see someone 20 years out and say, you know, that emotional eating or that drinking or that numbing in front of the TV, do you think that has anything to do with your betrayal? And they would say, oh my gosh, that happened years ago. But do you see, they put themselves in this perpetual holding pattern since that day. Anyway, if you're willing to let go of your story, grieve more than the loss, a bunch of things you need to do, you can move to stage four. Stage four is finding and adjusting to a new normal. Here's where you recognize, I cannot undo this betrayal, but I can control what I do with it. And I always use that example of, if you've ever moved to a new house, office, condo, apartment, whatever, all your stuff's not, not there, it's not quite cozy yet, but it's going to be okay. When you're in this space, mentally and emotionally, you're turning down the stress response. Now you're not healing just yet, physically healing just yet, but now you're, you've stopped causing the massive damage you were causing in stages two and stage three. Here's what's so interesting about stage four as well. If you were to move, you don't necessarily take everything with you, right? You don't take the things that don't represent who you wanna be in that new space. And what I found so interesting to stage four was, if your friends weren't there for you, they're not coming with you through this transformation. So people say to me all the time, what the heck am I, I've had these friends for, for years. I feel like I don't belong. I feel like I don't fit. Is it me? Yes, it is. It's you because you're undergoing this transformation. You're making all kinds of new rules, new boundaries, 
reassessing who you want in your life, what kind of uh, relationships you're willing to have and willing to tolerate. If it was one-sided where you were just giving and they were just taking, you're not having that anymore. You're changing. So just so you know what's happening there. And I can go so much more into that in future episodes. Now, when you've settled into this space, you've made it your home, you've made it okay, you can move into the fifth most beautiful stage. And this is healing, rebirth, and a new worldview. So in this stage, the body starts to physically heal. You've turned down the stress response. So now you want to eat well. You want to exercise self-love, self-care. You didn't have the bandwidth for any of that earlier. You were surviving. Now you do. Your, uh, the mind starts to heal. You're making new rules, new boundaries based on, on the road you've just traveled. And you have a new world view, a new mental model based on your entire experience, based on everything you've learned, everything you've seen, all you've come to know. And remember the four legs of the table? We were only all about the physical and the mental. By this point, we're solidly grounded because we're focused on the emotional and the spiritual too. Those are the five stages. So here's what I invite you to do. If you haven't already, it's all spelled out here in Trust Again, Overcoming Betrayal and Regaining Health, Confidence and Happiness. Uh, if you go to the pbtinstitute.com forward slash trust again, you can um, you get the it'll link to Amazon, but I want you to know that link because come on back and I have all kinds of gifts for you. Uh, so this way you can you can enjoy the gifts along with the book. And the book you can get the book in uh, hardcover, Kindle, um, and audio, uh, Audible. And I read it, so this way you'll hear my story. You'll you'll uh, go through the five stages with all kinds of experiential activities. I have the four-step trust rebuilding process, which I'll be teaching you too. I have all of my study participant stories in there. So you can, you can read what they've done. And, um, and just so you know, the book really is, when, when I did this study, it, it, it had to take and write that dissertation. It was about 500 hours <laughs> of research and 250 studies. And then when you have this research committee, I just did a numbers game and I was like, I can't justify all of that research and all of those hours and only my research committee gets to read it. So I made it much more user friendly. And that's what Trust Again is. So uh, you get the benefit of all that research. It's all in there. You'll see exactly why uh, the symptoms you have are where they came from, why they're there, most importantly, how to heal from it. But um, that's the biggest, the, the biggest thing I, wanna, I want you to, to leave you with today is that you're not crazy, you're not alone, and you can heal from all of it. I truly look at betrayal as one of the most painful of the human experiences. Like I said, uh, this was the person, these were the people who said, you know, when all those other people are making you crazy, I got you, you're safe with me. And when that's the very person who shatters that sense of safety and security, it's terrifying. So um, so we got you. You're not alone, you're not crazy. You can heal from all of it. So tune back in again next time because I'm gonna give, be giving you so many more tools, uh, processes, strategies, solutions, so you can take your trauma and turn it into transformation. Because when it just stays on you, you know, you were just the recipient of this, it's like a bad game of hot potato. No, 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 we don't do it that way. So what you're gonna do is the experience already happened. You've already experienced the worst of it. We're gonna do something really good with it. So that's what's coming. Well, thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.